All right, Uncle Sam FM, I am back to finish my video series on playing Major League Soccer and Football Manager. And what we're going to look at in this video is player acquisition. I'll reiterate again that while a lot of this is, very, is going to seem confusing to those of you who are more familiar with how football works in leagues around the world, it is, again, part of the, the, this effort to keep MLS financially stable. They, again, they do not want a replay of what happened in the North American Soccer League in the 1970s and 80s. And so a lot of these rules, uh, these methods of acquisition, were put in be, you know, for, for that purpose. So there is a reason for all of it. And another thing I'll, I'll point out right away before we get into the actual player acquisition is that Major League Soccer is, is different in a lot of ways to leagues around the world, but maybe the most significant is that it is a single entity, meaning we're not talking about 23, 24, 26, 27 individual clubs. Major League Soccer is one entity with franchises that all represent the one entity. And in fact, the way it kind of works, and this, they, this was after a, there was a legal battle fought that MLS won uh, to make sure that it functions this way. But MLS owns all of the player contracts in the league. So even if a player plays for Atlanta United, they, their contract is owned by Major League Soccer. And again, it's all part of the effort to keep Major League Soccer financially stable, uh, to keep the competitive equity balanced so that you don't have a... They want to avoid a league where you've got two, three teams dominating the league from one year to the next. You, you can pretty much predict the Spanish La Liga top two teams for the next 10 years. I could tell you that I could tell you right now that in 2028, Barcelona and Real Madrid are going to be the top two teams in Spain, and I'm probably going to be right. Major League Soccer wants to avoid that kind of thing. And so they want, to, they want competitive equity. They want the league to be balanced. And there's very few leagues around the world where you see what you see in MLS, where a club can finish last in the conference in one league but you know what they make a couple of right moves uh other teams slip up a little bit and that team that finished last is right in the hunt for the playoffs and for the championship and that's while it's it's not exclusive to mls it is rare that you have that kind of balance and so and a lot of it's created by the rules that we're going to look at in this video so let's dive into mls player acquisition what are the different methods? And we're going to go through each one, but the, the methods of player acquisition MLS are trades. So obviously trades within, within the league, uh, you know, and, and around the world, they just, it's just domestic transfers, but in MLS, it's, it, we, we call it trades. And that, that's a term that we use in American sports in general, but that's one of the ways to acquire players in MLS. Also discovery signings. And these are, this is basically any player signed from any, any foreign signing. Um, homegrown signings. These are guys signed from your academy, from you know, from your, your MLS academy team. Free transfers. These are guys who are just sitting there free. Now, these can be players who have been waived. Well, that's actually the next one. Waiver on the waiver draft. Or the, or sorry, the waiver wire. So in MLS, when you when you cut a player, um, then the all the other teams in the league have the opportunity to pick them up, and we'll talk about that a little bit. Also, the super draft. That is the college draft. Players who come out of college, they enter the MLS Super Draft, and then the teams um, pick those guys. The re-entry draft. These are players whose contracts are run out with MLS clubs, and they want to stay in the league. Um, they are put into a draft where another team can draft them. And then there's the waiver draft. And whenever uh, MLS has their March uh, registration for the league, Anybody who is waived at that time is then put into a draft pool and they're made available to the rest of the league in the waiver draft. And we'll talk about each one of those, starting with trades. These are, simply put, these are transfers between MLS clubs. And assets that can be used in trade negotiations are allocation money. And this is money kind of divvied out by the league. And... Um, I'm going to have, at the end of this video, I'm going to have kind of a little analogy that I think kind of helps maybe a little bit understand some of this. But allocation money is an asset that, and this is not a transfer budget. 
uh, it's, that's, it's something kind of different. But it is, it is funds that each team can use to purchase, for lack of a better word, other players in the league. Um, you can also trade your current players. Um, super draft picks. So if you have a first round pick that you want to trade for um, another MLS team striker, you can make that offer. And then your international slots are actually trade assets. And then player rights. Now, player rights is if you have a guy leave the league, um, whoever he played for last maintains his rights. And so maybe you have a player, a uh, center back. Um, for Well, uh, the Dynamo had a player named Andre Heinel that he left uh, the Houston Dynamo and went, I can't remember where he went, somewhere in Eastern Europe. And the Dynamo maintained his draft rights, or his, sorry, his player rights. And so if another team wanted to sign Andre Hainal, they had to make a trade with Houston Dynamo to get his rights before they could even offer a contract to Andre. And so um, that's kind of a quick example of player rights, and we'll talk about that briefly in a second. So discovery signings, these are our foreign transfers. Um, they use a club's transfer budget, not their allocation money. And again, I'm going to explain a little bit about what allocation money is later in the video. Uh, discovery signings do include loans. So if you go loan a player in from, from uh, an overseas club, this counts as one of your discovery signings. And used to, you'd only be allowed to have six, but now there's no limit to discovery signings. Your only limit to your discovery signings are your, is your squad limitations. And so, which is a good thing, because now you can go sign as many guys as you can fit on your squad from overseas. Um, homegrown signings, these are players signed from your academy. Again, this used to be limited, but now there's no limit to the number that can be signed. They, the league wants teams to develop their own talent. And so homegrown signings are a good way to, um, first of all, they're relatively cheap. Right, they're not as they're you, most of the time you sign them right from your academy for free, and they're not going to come in and walk into the team with a big giant contract, um, and then hopefully you can develop them or even or at least uh, develop them to the point where you can sell them, whether it be to a team overseas or use them as a tradable asset. So free transfers, there are no limit again to the number of free transfers you can sign. You will not be able to sign an American youth player. The only way you can acquire youth players are either through the, the MLS Super Draft or players signed from your own academy. So that is the only limitation to free transfers aside from your squad limitations. Waivers. Uh, players that have been released from MLS teams are placed on the waiver wire. And the way it works, teams will have two days after the player has been waived to make a claim. So... Let's say you've got a guy get waived and there are four teams who want this player. Well, the order determines which club has the highest, the waiver order determines which player, which club, I'm sorry, has the highest priority when making a claim. So what determines the waiver order? It's simply the order that the teams finished, the, the reverse order of the the, that the teams finished in the previous season. So meaning if you finished dead last the year before, you're going to get the first you're going to be the highest, have the highest priority in the waiver order. So um, I don't remember who had the worst record in real life last season, but let's just say it was the Houston Dynamo. Let's say the Houston Dynamo finished dead last. That means the next season, they're going to get the first shot at the players that are the first player that's waived. Now, when you make a claim, let's say the Dynamo, that happens. Somebody gets waived. Um, the Dynamo makes a claim on that player and signs him that then will drop them to the bottom of the waiver order. And the next worst team will then become the highest priority team. So that's kind of basically how the waiver order, waiver wire works. So another good way you can, you can get a hold of, you know, because of the way squad limitations are, you've got a salary cap that you know teams can exceed. Sometimes the salary cap will force a team to have to release a, a quality player that you can fit in your un, under your cap. And so, if nothing else, they then become a tradable asset. So, it's definitely worth looking at the waiver wire when you see a player get waived. Um, the MLS Super Draft. This is made up of college and, and sometimes just elite youth players. It's held in January. There are four rounds. Each team gets one pick per round. The order of the draft is determined by team performance in the previous season. 
with teams finishing at the bottom of the table, picking first. So it's kind of like the, the waiver order. Uh, now, again, draft picks, they are tradable. So if you, um, if you don't like where you are sitting in the draft order, and you can trade that draft pick for a player or maybe even just for allocation money, then um, that is something that's possible in MLS. And you have the re-entry draft held at the end of every season. This consists of players whose contracts have expired. Some players <coughs> whose contracts expired will choose not to go into the, re- into the re-entry draft. It could be that they just want to leave MLS, they're done with MLS, and so they choose to leave. That means they will not be in the re-entry draft. Um, Another thing to kind of note here is that if you have a player have a contract expire and he chooses to go into the re-entry draft, you are not going to be able to draft him. You can't draft players who leave your club to go into the re-entry draft. Um, Just one little side note there. And re-entry draft picks are not tradable. The only draft picks that are tradable are the super draft picks. All right, and then you have the waiver draft held in March after the squad registration date. This will consist of players that were waived because teams left them off of their final squad registration. Uh, Again, most of the time, these guys are not going to be that good if there is um, any players in the waiver draft. But occasionally, you know, because of salary caps, there will be a a decent player in the the waiver draft. So it is kind of worth um, having a look to see who's there. Now, um, the expansion draft. This is held at the end of the 2018 season only. It will consist of players from the MLS squads that were not placed on the protected list. Each team is allowed to protect 11 players. So, for example, the Houston Dynamo, let's just, let's hypothetically say they're the club. They're allowed to say, FC Cincinnati, you cannot draft any of these 11 players. Now, there are some stipulations um, on, like, you have to have this many homegrown players and this many international players. Um, Some players are automatically protected. I think the homegrown players actually are automatically protected. But in any case, um, you protect 11 of your players, and then the expansion draft is five rounds. Each expansion team, which in 2018, it's only FC Cincinnati, they get one pick per round. So they're going to pick five players in the expansion draft. Now, the good news is that no existing MLS team can have more than one player selected. So let's say, again, I'm the Houston Dynamo. I choose the 11 players that I'm protecting. And FC Cincinnati, in the second round, choose one of the players that I did not protect. Well, that means they cannot pick any more of my players. They can only have one of my players. So that is kind of good news, but it does kind of also help FC Cincinnati uh, to get players that are hopefully, you know, good enough to contribute to their expansion season, Um, which that has been a struggle for MLS is figuring out how to help expansion teams be competitive in their first season. Um, Actually, the Chicago Fire won the league in their expansion year. They were the only team that, has been able to to do that so far although atlanta united won it in their second season so the expansion draft is really there to help that expansion team transition to the league without you know finishing dead last um so so that are your those were your acquisition methods um what about mls team assets so i mentioned allocation money general allocation money can be used in trades it can also be used for fees. So signing, <coughs> excuse me, signing uh, or signing fees or agent fees in contract negotiations. You can also use general allocation money to reduce the impact of a senior contract player. So let's say you need you need to get your squad, your squad is just over the cap. But you don't want to release anybody. You don't want to waive any of the players on in your squad. So if you have enough allocation money, you can buy down one one or more of your senior contract players to get below the cap. You can also reduce the salary cap impact of a designated player to 150,000 per year instead of the 505,000. Now, you can acquire allocation money in a few different ways. First of all, the league just divvies it out, 200,000. A portion of that of of your transfer income for selling a player to a foreign club is general allocation money. So if you sell a guy to Real Madrid for a million dollars, 
then a portion of that is going to be your allocation money. So it encourages you to sell players, to develop players, and to sell them um, to players overseas. If you qualify for the CONCACAF Champions League, you get another $200,000 in general allocation money. So, you know, doing well, success in the league, they encourage that. They want you to they want you to win. They want to encourage you to win. And if you do make it to the Champions League, then you get $200,000 of allocation money. Now, they also want to help teams that are in the bottom of the league. So if you fail to qualify for the MLS playoffs, you're also given $200,000 of allocation money to help you build your team back up. So another type of allocation money is targeted allocation money. This is distributed by the league at the beginning of the season. It can be used to convert a designated player to a senior contract player, which that's another big, um, I mean, that's big. If you, you, so that basically means that if you have enough targeted allocation money, you can, you can have four or five designated players on your squad if you buy a couple of them down to senior players. Uh, it can be used to sign players that are earning more than the, the maximum wage. So target allocation money is a big asset. If you can trade for that, get a hold of it. Um, now, you do only get what they give you at the beginning of the league. So with all that said, I, I, have, an, I have kind of an analogy that I use. When I try to explain to somebody how MLS works, this is probably the best way um, that I know how to explain it. It's going to seem kind of silly, but to me, it's kind of the best way. So Major League Soccer is kind of like a game of Monopoly. I don't know if you've ever played Monopoly, but Monopoly is a board game where you buy and sell properties and, and, and you can buy houses um, and hotels. So let's just say, all right, you are Atlanta United. They are the defending MLS Cup champions. Um, but you are Atlanta United and you're playing the Monopoly game of Major League Soccer. So in Monopoly, you have a banker. And in MLS, the banker is the league. The league owns everything. They own the board. They own all the properties. They own all the pieces, the little car, the little hat, the shoe. All of that belongs to the league. They, um, they divvy out money at the beginning of the year. And we know that as allocation money. So allocation money is a lot like Monopoly money. Now, the reality is you can only spend Monopoly money playing Monopoly, right? You can't take your $20 of Monopoly money and go down to the convenience store and buy a soda, right? It is only good in Monopoly. That's like allocation money. If you're playing in Major League Soccer, allocation money is only good with other teams in the league or with the league itself. So let's say Atlanta United, they want to buy a property. They want to buy a house. They want to buy a motel. Well, they're going to use that allocation money to either buy it from the league or to buy it from another team like the Houston Dynamo, right? So they're buying players. They're going to use that allocation money. The Dynamo can't accept real cash. You can't use real cash in a game of Monopoly. I mean, you'd really be stretching the rules. We're kind of assuming that you cannot. Okay, so, so let's say Atlanta United wants to buy a player from a club overseas, like maybe Palmeiras in Brazil. Well, Palmeiras is not going to accept your monopoly money, right? Your allocation money. You can't take targeted allocation money to Palmeiras. That's like taking monopoly money to the convenience store. So what Atlanta United would have to do is reach into their own pockets and pull out some cash to go buy that player from Palmeiras. Maybe, you know, maybe, it, hey, it's like a motel. Like maybe, uh, you know, a game of Monopoly, there's only so many motels that are in the box, right? So maybe all the motels are out. And so at Atlanta United, they need to run down to the local store and buy a, another pack of Monopoly motels. It's kind of like going and buying a player from overseas. You're not going to be able to use that allocation money. You're going to have to use your own cash, and that would be the club's transfer budget. So to me, this is sort of the best way to look at MLS, is that the teams in MLS are playing their own game. They're sitting down playing Monopoly, and if they want to, if they want to go outside of the game to help them win, they're going to have to, you know, pull out their own money to do it instead of, you know, going through the league. And even then, there still is, you know, an element of going through the league. So hopefully that kind of helps to understand 
Um, this video helps you to understand how players are acquired in MLS and, and sort of why it's different. Um, if you do have any questions, please put them in the comments section. I'll try to answer the best I can. But again, Major League Soccer is a lot of fun. It's, it's, it's a unique challenge in Football Manager because it's the, the rules, the squad rules, the, the acquisition rules, they make it a lot more challenging to maintain your dynasty. Um, at least I've found that, you know, it, it, to be honest with you, in my experience with MLS, I can usually build my team pretty quick. I can get my team winning pretty quick. But it's maintaining that squad quality. And, it, and, it's, and it's also balancing success in continental play in the CONCACAF Champions League with success in the domestic league. Um, and again, it, to me, that's just that's easier in other leagues around the world because it's easier to create depth, which in MLS that that all becomes part of the challenge. And so, it is a lot more fun. It's a lot more challenging. If you if you're bored with other leagues around the world in Football Manager, I would highly recommend you give MLS a try. And hopefully, this series of videos will kind of help you to well to play in a way that is as enjoyable for you as it is for me. So this is Uncle Sam FM signing off again any questions comments please put them in the comment section and i'll answer them best i can but enjoy mls